Hey everyone, welcome to another week of More Than You Asked For. That's a little bit of JavaScript and a whole lot whole lot more with me, Kyle Shevlin. Uh, JB script just followed just as I was signing in, so I don't know if you caught that. Hope you did, but thank you, JB script. Uh, good to have you on board. Uh, how's it going? Y'all having a good good week? Like, did you have a did you have a decent weekend or um, anything special happen to you? Uh, did you do anything interesting? Learn anything new? You know, put it in the chat. Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, Kevin Van Gelder's already here waving. Hi, Kevin. How you doing, Bo? How you doing, buddy? I meant to say bro, and it totally did not come out as bro. And you can hear my wife laughing at me because that sometimes happens because she laughs at me. She thinks I'm funny and um, thinks I do funny things. Like, not necessarily humor, but like humorous things. You you get my drift. Um, Kevin already hit the command, what you doing? Uh, tonight, I thought for funsies, let's walk through uh, that JavaScript UI library I tweeted about uh, called FOMO. And Owen Conti is already in the in the chat, and he, he said he FOMO'd into the stream. So I'm glad you're not missing out. I'm glad you're here. But, you know, don't live life out of fear, buddy. Don't, don't do it. You know, be courageous. Take chances. That kind of thing. So, um, yeah. I'll take brood. <laughs> Good. Um, Y'all will have to deal a little bit with uh, me still eating dinner. Um, it's uh, We didn't get dinner really cooking until uh, like 7.15 or so, and so it just finished, and I'm, I'm kind of hungry. Uh, and as always, this, uh, this episode brought to you by beer. So I've got some beer here too. Uh, cheers to all of you. So, yeah. Owen oh, Conti's now following. Thank you, Owen. Good to good to have you on board. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gonna take a little bite here. Uh, I'll tell you what it is here in a minute. <clears throat> so uh, we make this dish. We call it ranch skillet. It's uh, just some uh, like some beef. Uh, we use turkey, but like ground turkey. Uh, bell peppers, black beans, corn, tomatoes, uh, chilies, like chopped up chilies, and then uh, a cup of rice, and you just let it uh, all cook in one pot. Um, oh, taco seasoning, all cook in one pot. Really good, a little sour cream, a little cheese, and uh, you got a really tasty meal that doesn't take a whole lot of work to, to make. So there you go, recipe from me. All right, so um, yeah, let's, uh, let's look at some code. So, um, if you were following me on Twitter this week, you probably came across a couple things. Um, one, a tweet that blew the fuck up. What the heck? I was just being like, hey, friends, you know, hey, reach out to the people on Twitter. You never know. You might meet up in real life. It'll be cool. And that blew up, man. That's my most popular tweet ever. It's got like 550 likes right now. What is going on in the world? You know, but, uh, you know... Some people don't have that kind of confidence, so I get it. So I get why encouraging people help people, and I'm glad it did. Uh, I'm really hoping to maybe hear back later on about more stories where, like, hey, I had the courage to do this and uh, reached out and, uh, yeah, you know, uh, met up with maybe a hero or someone you uh, uh, you love, that kind of thing. I, I, I get it. And, and, you know, it took... Um, you know, doing that has actually really helped my career, so... Uh, I hope it can help some of your careers. Uh, we got Trimakos. Uh, you make me hungry. Uh, I hope uh, my food makes you hungry, not me. I think my wife might take a little offense to that. I'll fight you. She'll fight you. Did you hear that? Um, so, uh, and she can fight. She she uh, she's a member of a of a girls' kickboxing gym, so she knows how to throw a punch. Um, yeah. And then uh, Jesse says, "Wow, congrats! I saw that tweet. Yeah, it was just it was just an interesting phenomenon." But uh, I made another tweet last night that was, uh, "Hey, um, um, this JavaScript framework I'm trying to build this UI thing. Uh, hey, it works, and that's what you have before you in the in here. If you want to check out the link, uh, if you hit the what you doing command like Kevin did up there, you could see the uh, the the link and you can go check it out." Um, Jesse says. Uh, I did that a couple times back in 2008 when I was living in Berlin. Uh, you're Canadian? Okay. Uh, meet up with people I knew only for, as they were traveling? Nice. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because, like, Twitter is this wonderful 
Uh, I mean, I mean, wonderful place in the sense that there's lots of people with your shared interest, right? It's definitely horrific in other ways, like fuck the Nazis, right? Like fuck the Nazis. I think we can safely say that, right? Um, but it's wonderful in that there's lots of people that um, share our interests. I often make the joke that um, Facebook is all the people I know in real life who don't understand my work. Twitter is all the people who understand my work who I don't yet know in real life. But uh, changing that, taking some chances, it, it's a good thing. So uh, Jesse knows it, and I know some other people know it. So awesome. our neighbors are pounding against uh, one of our shared walls. They just moved, like new neighbors moved in, and they. Uh, I just thought someone was like at our door for a second, so that's why I turned away and, and stopped talking. But it, it's really weird. They also like to vacuum at like one o'clock in the morning. I I don't understand what that's about, but. But uh, my wife said, fuck them. We haven't met them. So I don't know. Maybe they're nice people and just weird, strange night owls. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get our FOMO on. Um, Luke is frosty in the house, y'all. So uh, what up? What up? He's keeping it frosty by uh, coming to our channel and uh, watching the stream. So uh, the reason I made this, might as well start there. The reason I made this is... Uh, I just wanted to try, right? Like, uh, I've kind of been mulling in my mind for about a month, maybe even more, of how can I make a JavaScript UI library? Can I make it like React? Um, would I do something different? What would I make and how would I do it? And this is kind of what I did. I've kind of had this mental picture for a while. Maybe, uh, oh, I don't have any of my notebooks around me. Yes, I do. Uh, maybe I'll draw some pictures today, kind of explain that model. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I should also share some other good news. I mean, I've already shared the news, but I should put it on the, on the, uh, I should let y'all know, um, despite the hoodie I'm wearing, I mean, this hoodie's just really comfy, y'all. It's, um, it's really comfy. Like, you know what I'm talking about. You have a hoodie that you love or, like, a piece of clothing that you just love. This is, this is, like, a great wintertime hoodie. It's really warm. Um... So you might have heard, uh, I have accepted a new job. I will be starting at Formidable Labs on Monday. Uh, cheers to that. If you got a beer with you, uh, I hope you'll cheers with me. Um, starting a new job, I'm really excited. Uh, I will be working on an amazing team there. They have so much concentrated talent there. Uh, it, it blows my mind. Some of the names that... Uh, uh, I'm really excited to be like working alongside would be like Ken Wheeler, Emma Brillhart, Yanni Evacalio, Phil Pluckton, uh, Blaine Caston, um, Eric Bear, all these all these amazing people, right? Like I'm just so stoked to be um, to have to have gotten the job. Uh, Kevin asks, has, have they sent you a hoodie yet? Uh, I'll probably get my Fermita swag as they call it on uh, Monday when I head up to Seattle. I'll be in Seattle for a couple days, so if any of y'all are from Seattle, hit me up on Twitter. Um, I might have some time in the evening to uh, meet up for a drink or two. Um, let me know. Um, yeah, that would be fun. Um, but I'll get my Fermita swag, and so um, maybe next Tuesday, I will be streaming from like uh, the place I'm staying, and uh, you know I'll take a, like a minimal setup with me I mean, actually, I could probably take all this. I'll, I'll, I'll be driving up there with my car, um, and we, we can make it work. Yeah, it'll be fun. So um, if they have a hoodie, if they have a formidable ho hoodie, uh, I'll wear it next week, okay? Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's look at some code. Let's, let's look at some code, and I kind of want to like, maybe like try and rewrite it today. We'll, we'll see. Um, and after I've explained it and walked through, uh, maybe we'll add some features. I have some ideas of how to do this, and um, yeah, it'll be fun. So uh, I need to get to my uh, my main FOMO project, and uh, you know I've been trying to do a little bit of, a little bit of Vim, so I might use some Vim tonight. I suck at Vim, but uh, I've been trying to do it. So bear with me, okay? You 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 okay with bearing with my my horrible Vim? Skills. All right, I need another bite. I'm hungry. All right. So, um, let's see. Let's give this a try. 
So let's uh, let's look at this um, let's look at this source code. It's gonna take me a while. I've actually purposely disabled the um, the uh, the arrow keys so that I have to force myself to um, um, so I have to force myself to use the H J K L keys to move around. So trying to trying to teach my brain things. So um, uh, looks like I might need to bump this up a bit. Give me a second. I'll have to resize this. You know how that goes. Um, here we go. Can y'all read that? I think that's pretty legible. Let me know in the uh, in the chat if this is a good size. Um, Ahi is uh, is saying delay the stream. I haven't got home from the shops yet. Hi Ahi. Uh, sorry man. Uh, I know you're like 16 hours ahead of me, and uh, it's you're probably running some morning errands or something like that. I don't know what you're doing. Are you getting breakfast, coffee? Uh, I can't do math. What's 16 hours? Oh, you're talk You're after work. Fuck that, man. You're like ready for happy hour. Um, I hear you. I hear you. Arrow keys are for chumps, says uh, Kenso, and uh, Kevin tells me it's legible. All right, so let's kind of reason about like what we actually need to accomp like to to make um, to make our own JavaScript UI library, right? Um, the big things that we need is um, if we're going to follow the pattern of React, which I chose to do, which is we want to build up some representation of of what will what could be our DOM. And then we need a way to render that representation as, as actual DOM, right? And what have we called it? We called it virtual DOM, right? This was like a huge breakthrough that like, I think React really gave our JavaScript community in general is this idea of a virtual DOM. So we can have this, um, this data structure that uh, tells us what we would like to render. It's very declarative, right? So I wanted to follow that same pattern. And the way I chose to do that was to make uh, an H function, right? You've, you've probably seen H functions from uh, HyperScript and uh, there's also an H function in Preact and uh, I'm not sure about Inferno, I haven't used it. Um, but HyperApp, I took a lot of inspiration from HyperApp if you haven't checked it out and we did a few streams on that. so. Uh, I made an H function and I decided to make it curried. So if we if we kind of walk through this, we have the H function. Its first argument is the tag, like the HTML tag uh, element. And then its second, it returns a function. That way we can partially apply tags and get things like make divs and H1s and all that um, is props. But we want to make sure props is always there. It doesn't matter if it's empty. So I defaulted it to an empty object. And lastly, we want to gather up any arguments in the last function as uh, it returns a function, and we want to gather whatever amount of arguments we get it into an array. So I'm using the um, the rest operator to gather all those arguments into an array, and all we're doing is we're just creating uh, plain JavaScript objects. And uh, I have put a little extra something something in there. You can see down here on uh, line five. I've added a key. I haven't actually used this key anywhere in the app yet. It just seemed like something I should do uh, if I ever start to do DOM diffing. So this function right here is is pretty obvious how it works, right? So the next thing you kind of need is if you're going to have this structure, right? You're going to end up with let's like let's try and imagine what um, our structure would be like. I'm actually going to quit out of this. Um, and uh, I will, what do I want to do? I kind of want to just, uh, well, here, I'll do this. I'll go back in, sorry. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, I know there's probably a much better way to do this, but I haven't learned it, so bear with me. So what I kind of want to um, have people um, kind of wrap their head around, if you haven't done this before, is our virtual DOM is really, it's like a JSON object almost, right? It's a series of nested objects and arrays, basically. Uh, Manata Cadavra is up in the building. Sup, buddy? What's up? I'm glad you're in here. I actually don't know if Manata, Manata Cadavra, excellent name. I know I said that before. I don't know what gender you are, so I hope you're okay with buddy as a gender neutral term, even though 
I guess buddy I would typically use for uh, a male. Um, but yeah, um, I'm sorry if I should know you. I, I you know uh, sometimes I don't match Twitter handles faces to Twitch handle faces. So uh, I hope you all forgive me, and I hope you know I'm always trying to be sensitive about being inclusive about that stuff. Uh, it's true, monads don't have a gender. Uh, 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 or monads. I should that that came out weird. Monads, like that almost sounded like my nads, and I'm not gonna go there. Uh, save that. My wife just chuckled. You hear that? This is like having like a, a laugh track uh, while you, you know, run a Twitch stream. It's it's <laughs> no. Actually, if y'all run a Twitch stream, uh, you can be as professional as you want, and you can be like me and be like, fuck it. I have a life to live, and so does she. And we have a small, tiny apartment. So why would I kick her out of her place to work too? So. Uh, Y'all have been really cool about it, and I really appreciate it. Um, but let's imagine our structure, because how we're going to take our virtual DOM and turn it into real DOM depends on our understanding of the structure. So, like, let's assume I've made, like, like this. I'll, um, oh, what did I do? I did not put it in, in uh, insert mode like a fool. Okay. Let's say I've done uh, this. No props. Uh, we'll give it some children. Uh, we'll give it an H1. And this might get a little, uh, little tedious to look at, especially with all the parentheses. It might be hard to mentally keep track of, but I hope it's not that bad. Um, it reminds me a lot of like Elm. If you've ever done uh, any Elm work, um, yeah, that's what it makes me think of. So this could be like a very, very simple view made with our H functions, right? And what is this going to output? Like this is going to output like, like, so we're going to get a top level div, uh, with props of an empty object because we didn't give it any props and children in this case will be an array and our array will be uh, and a tag of h1, uh, no props, children will be a string of hello world, well, an array of a string, sorry, because it's always an array, and I'm just going to skip the keys for now because uh, I have no keys, so be cool about that, don't point out that I've ignored it. Uh, I, I understand that, but I just, I don't need it at the moment. So, and then, uh, you know, we have our children again as an array. Uh, this is a basic view and you're, you're kind of getting the structure, right? You're, you're, uh, this makes sense. Uh, we'll close this off. We'll close off children and then we'll close off, uh, our object. So this is kind of what, um, Oh, did my stream die? I'm sorry, y'all. My internet's acting like shit. Well, I'm gonna keep pushing through. Uh, I hope you, you forgive me. I can't do anything about this. Um, just for the last um, for the last few weeks, like it's just been shit as fuck. Um, yeah, it, maybe it's the neighbors. I don't think so. Um, I don't know what's going on, honestly. Like I, you know, I really get tired of this. I pay Comcast a shit ton of fucking money to give me um, to you know to give me good internet, and I get this crap sometimes. I mean, I don't have anything that should be chewing up internet, so I don't know. I can quit this. There's really nothing else going that should be using the internet, so I don't know what my wife's doing. She doesn't have anything crazy going on. None of her phones are doing stuff, so I, I'm really sorry, folks. Um, but okay, I'm going to try and stay focused, do my best. I apologize. Uh, I'll go, I'll go, you know, 
I don't know, bang some heads at Comcast, I guess. I, I don't know what else to tell you. So uh, I'm sorry. Um, hope you understand. But focusing like, so we take these functions and we essentially get um, an object representation of of what our DOM could be. So now, now how do we handle this? And now my view count says I'm at zero. That's awesome. Makes me feel special. Um, so what we need is to create a uh, we need to create a function that can take this object and start creating the actual elements in, in the DOM, right? So uh, that's what this node to DOM function does, because basically every um, you know what I do actually know a little bit of a shortcut. Um, I'm not great at this Vim stuff, but I do know the DD function that allows me to uh, or command, right? They're called commands. Yeah, okay. Oh, did I just, uh, what's the undo? Uh, you? There we go. I had to remember. Okay. All right, so that's what node to DOM does here. It's, um, it'll take a node and we know that nodes have tag props and children and it looks like I actually need to add um, uh, the key in it in case key is there I'm not gonna do anything with it. well late later I'll need to add the key um, but what we do if you've never done this before this is actually a lot simpler than you might think uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do take the document we're gonna call the method create element and we're gonna pass it the tag name. So we get our element. And like our first one was a div, right? So we'd get a div. And then if we have any props, what we wanna do is uh, basically, uh, depending on what kind of prop it is, we're either gonna make it an actual attribute, like an HTML attribute, like class, ID, disabled, that kind of thing. Or we are going to apply it as a property to our element. Uh, this is what we use for functions. That's why um, like we'll use like on click or on uh, on input. Um, these are the actual JavaScript like DOM uh, functions that we expect to fire. And so what we do is we check if the value is a type of function, like uh, we've given it a function, like we're gonna apply it as a property on it, otherwise we're gonna set attribute on it. Um, some people who are really astute will notice that uh, what this does right now, it doesn't support SVG. Um, in the future, I'll make it support SVG, and up here we'll change how we create the element to support SVG. I leave that up to you to check it out. If you've never tried to uh, make SVG this way before, there's a, there's a slightly different um, syntax that we need to use. It, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but now that we've taken our element and we've applied uh, either the functions or the attributes to it, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the children and remember like children at minimum is an empty array. So we can call uh, array uh, methods on it. In this case, we're just gonna call a for each. We don't wanna return anything. We just wanna do something with it. So uh, if it's a string, we know that that's a, like text that we wanna render. Uh, you saw that when we had the h1 and the p tag that were like, hello world, and this is a basic view. And if it's a string, we're gonna append it as a text node. We're gonna create that node and append it to our element. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna expect that to be another node in our in our dom tree right like uh, we had the nested h1 and p nodes so we want to recursively call this function again on all the children and so you know it works down the stack basically uh, building up our dom and working all the way back up and uh, lastly we're going to return our element and uh, we do this so that like uh, once all our dom is built up we hand it back to uh, the function i'm going to go over next so that should be pretty simple. Um, I actually wrote a blog post about this uh, a while back. Let me, um, it was a long time ago, but if you go to kyleshevelin.com, you should, I think it's on the second page. And I may, I've learned some things since the day I wrote this. Um, so maybe it needs a good update, but uh, 
I called it this, how to write your own JavaScript DOM element factory or a basic hyperscript H function. And this is very similar. The difference being uh, I curried this so I can have some more, um, like I can have partially applied things throughout my application um, when I'm doing this. Uh, at some point, I do plan to support JSX, uh, but I just haven't reached that point yet. But you could check out this blog post. Uh, maybe that'll be helpful to you. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's go a little further. I did need a render function, um, and I, I had a discovery about this. If you've done, um, you know, if you've done React for any number of time, you've seen React DOM dot render, and the argument order is uh, basically a view or a component and an entry point, right? This is the this is the argument order for uh, React DOM's render. And what I kind of dawned on, what dawned on me, what I realized is like, this is actually backwards, especially if you're gonna curry the function, because what happens is the entry is very unlikely to change. We always wanna put the least stable argument as the last argument in functional programming. And I'm trying to apply some functional programming to FOMO. And I realized if I, if I curry this, if my render function, as you see in the line below, takes an entry and then a view, like if we curry this, what I can do is I can have a partially applied entry point to my application. So it's always ready for this particular DOM node to just pass new views into it, right? So my render method will, right now, this is very naive, but what I do is I clear the entire DOM and I append the whole new uh, DOM rendering, uh, the view, onto that node. So if I've stored my my DOM node, my entry point, right, by giving it the, by partially applying the entry, I can just keep handing it new views and re-render my app. And that's how I was able to make FOMO do updates. And so I thought that was kind of a neat uh, discovery. Um, maybe other people don't find that quite so neat, but uh, it really kind of made this novel for me. So the last function we have here is kind of where it all comes together, and that's this app function. And this I kind of really borrowed from uh, HyperApp. Uh, I gave it the same uh, signature, uh, but I do some different things under the hood right now. And uh, maybe it'll get more complicated as I uh, work on the app more, and I actually add things like lifecycle hooks and DOM diffing and stuff like that. But uh, let's let's walk through this. I th I think you'll start to see like why I have all these partially applied things that uh, really kind of come together in an elegant way, and you might start to see why like functional programming and currying is like it can be really powerful. So uh, I do have one small mutation in here. What I did was uh, I take the state we pass in, which should be our initial state, and I store it as this. Uh, this variable that I'm able to change the app state. And that's really important. Uh, and then I start by, I make a render entry, which is render with the partially applied entry. This is that spot in the DOM that we will keep inserting our application into. And then uh, view is also a curried function. You don't see it here, but views in FOMO uh, all take uh, this signature it, it takes the actions first because the actions are pretty stable, right? You're not going to change uh, what you do to update state. You're going to change state to render new views, right? The actions are very stable. So we can partially apply actions first, return a function that waits for state, keep handing that partially applied view new states and render new views. So we return a function that accepts state. And then from here, this is where we would do stuff like uh, h1, uh, maybe uh, maybe class is state.class uh, and then the words could be like hello um, yeah hello from state.city I'm not digging the uh, the lack of syntax highlighting on that I might switch to sublime text here in a little bit but uh, this function signature is uh, is essentially, um, hey, look at me remembering how to do uh, 
how to bounce around words in Vim. I'm, I feel like I'm doing okay, much better than I, I, I have been doing. Um, this is how we can apply state to a view and get a new view, right? So what you see on line uh, 43 is we've, we've applied our actions and we've actually passed them through this bind actions function, which I'll walk through in a second. Uh, from there, we're gonna make our first view and I don't necessarily need to save this because I don't use first view anywhere else. Um, a little cleanup I could do is uh, I could take view with actions and app state and pass it directly into render entry. Um, and maybe I'll do that in a bit. Um, but let's look at what we're doing to the actions to get them to work with our application. So uh, actions have a specific signature as, as well. I'm going to go up here and uh, I'm going to write them out. So an action uh, is an object that will have uh, a method on it. So like handle click, for example. Each action accepts a value is the first argument. So we can, and then it returns a function that gets state applied to it. And lastly, we wanna return some uh, partial state. So in this case, we might do something like, like this. We might, uh, we might return a value of value, right? You've done that with forms and all sorts of things and set state, right? Um, so this is a this is a curried function with with uh, with that accepts two arguments, right? Um, what I need to do somehow is I need to take the function that you've created, and I need to apply this current state to it every time you call it, and that's what bind action does. Bind is a uh, not a uh, maybe the most accurate word. I, I couldn't think of a better word, but let me walk you through this function. This is, if you were following me on Twitter yesterday, this was the part that was like just slightly beyond my my understanding for a little bit because I was trying to do stuff like dot bind and all these things trying to make it work. And uh, it took me a while to really figure out how I was going to use state in my application and, and handle it. So this, this function just takes uh, an, an actions object what we do is on line 53, you see we get the keys of the action, so like handle click in this case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that keys array and we're gonna reduce it down to a new object of methods that we will use in our application. Um, I'm basically taking your functions and I'm gonna modify them into functions that FOMO is ready to use to update state. And so, uh, just for um, convenience, I uh, saved off the action uh, as actions dot, uh, actions key, right? And then uh, bound actions is the first is our accumulator. So I'm taking our bound actions and I'm making a new function of that name, and I'm reducing the arity. The arity that I tell you to give me is an arity of two, a view and then state. Uh, I mean a value and a state. And I'm changing it to an arity of one where all I want is your value. And so you call it with the value and I've swapped the functions for you. I haven't done anything internally to change it, right? It's still gonna fire, you'll see this. And what happens is the first thing we do when you fire an action is we're gonna update the app state held in closure. Our app state is on line 45. And what we do is uh, we immutably change our app state by um, creating a new object. We're taking the action that I, I saved it. We're taking the value, passing it to it, and we're giving it the state. So we should get our, our partial state. And uh, I'm now realizing I have a very, um, I have a small bug. It's good to know. Uh, I will fix this. And this is why it's great that I'm walking through it because I have a small bug. Um, and uh, this is how you uh, figure this stuff out. I am not merging it with the current app state. That's where I, I messed up. So this should be app state, and uh, I'll have to cut a new release here uh, tonight. No big deal. Um, but what we want to do is we want to merge the, the partial state change that you've made with your action and value with the current state. And then uh, what we want to do on the next line is we want to re-render our view. Uh, our actions haven't changed, just the state has changed and we're gonna re-render our view with our current state, right? And so each time this function fires, uh, the action is gonna get our app state. And that's, that's pretty cool to me. 
Um, and lastly, uh, we return our, our bound actions so that they can be, as you see back on uh, line 47, our bound actions are now given to um, uh, our view. And that's kind of how this works, right? So uh, essentially, there's kind of two things going on. I'm storing a partially applied view and I'm getting new views by handing it new states. And every time I get a new state, I'm gonna take a new view and now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna pass it to the partially applied render entry and I'm gonna give it new views. So essentially every time you call an action, you're updating state, state gets applied to the new view, gives me the new view. The new view is given to the entry and the entry is updated and we get our next application. So uh, this was how, um, this is kind of how I reasoned about trying to make a JavaScript UI library. And uh, it does work. Uh, I'm going to exit out of um, out of Vim, and I'm going to go back to my much more comfortable land. Uh, I hope you're okay with that. Uh, always good to try and stretch the muscles a little bit. Um, and I guess what I also need to do is I'm going to pull up my example. So uh, this is actually that is actually in a whole new folder. Uh, side projects, some FOMO practice, and we will, what was it, HTTP server, I think is all I have to do. And uh, we're going to open this up in our browser. And uh, I may have broken something in fixing that bug. I hope not. FOMO is not defined. Oh, it's in a different folder now, isn't it? Um... That shouldn't be right. You gotta love this when I'm always uh, fixing things on uh, on the live stream, right? Oh, it's because I changed it because it's npm link. Oh, I moved all the folders around. Oh, crazy me. Okay. Uh, what I am going to do is this. I am going to copy the UMD from, um, I moved some folders around and so I broke my NPM link that I was using to make uh, this work. Uh, I suppose I actually don't need to use NPM link now, but I would get the wrong version because uh, of the bug. So yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this for now. Work, uh, FOMO, main dist there should be a fomo.umd and then I'm gonna put it in here as uh, yeah I should just be able to put it here I guess okay that worked sweet um, and then we'll uh, we'll look at this app and uh, yeah we'll just update stuff in this app and it should work So I should be able to get rid of all of that. And uh, sh this should just work, if I'm understanding right. I'll make this bigger so y'all can see. And uh, let's go back to our terminal and make sure this is working. And uh, we'll go and we'll reload it. And it works. OK, sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, so let's walk through this. So it's like a basic, what is a very simple FOMO app? and I really haven't done anything more than a very simple app. So uh, like honestly, uh, there could be all sorts of sh like crazy ass problems in this library. I just don't know yet. Um, but this is just for fun. I even have a warning. If you're looking at the GitHub repo, it's like do not use this in production. It's just for funsies. So an app's gonna kind of look like this. You'll, you'll indicate an initial state somewhere. You can totally put this in different files and just merge them together as a, as a big object, but um, your app takes uh, an, uh, a state object. Um, and then actions could be the same way. You can merge a bunch of objects together so long as they are namespaced appropriately because um, you wouldn't want something like um, handle click to uh, fuck up something else. Uh, I guess I could make it so it's a little recursive, like it'll go down a layer if you have actions that are named or like with a name spacing of some sort um 
I don't know. I'll have to think about that. And then lastly, I have a simple view down here on line 29, uh, you know, which follows the format that I, I showed in, in our app uh, in actions in a state. And uh, what I've done, this is, uh, this is why partially applying is really cool. In fact, I, I can even clean this up further because uh, I'm not doing any uh, classes on, on those. So, you know, I could do this. I am putting some properties on, on button in H1. I'm not going to do that, though. But, like, that's an option to you as, as uh, with these uh, curried H functions. But we just have a basic view that um, is going to fire this handle click uh, action up here. And uh, we're going to return our name, and we're just going to check that it's FOMO and return something else. Uh, I'll try something in a little bit, but this is the original um, example I made. And, and that's what you see right here. And you can see it's really inefficient. The entire application is going to be re-rendered. Uh, you can watch this; it'll collapse, and you'll if it's if the frame rate's really fast enough, you'll see that the uh, here. See if I can't bump this up for you. Yeah, um, you'll see this whole thing re-render. See the how the divs changed. So that's pretty inefficient. Um, I'll have to learn a little bit more about DOM diffing and, and that kind of thing here soon and, and try and make it more efficient. So that's the gist of FOMO. Uh, do you have any questions or anything like that that I can help you with? Um, you all been quiet in the last 20 minutes. I can't tell if I've just been really great at explaining or really boring or both or neither. So uh, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. Uh, hit me up in the chat. Uh, and while I'm waiting for that, uh, I'll try and make a slightly more complicated example because I'd like to see if it would even work. Uh, I haven't put this through its paces yet. So what I want to do is I want to make sure values are working right on my actions. So instead of a button, I'm going to make an input. And uh, we'll see how that works. So input equals h. Input. And uh, we'll change our uh, handle input. We'll get uh, in our E. It should get our event, right? It should get our event. And then what we'll do is we'll return our our name. Is we'll make it. Uh, we'll do our classic. Um, You've seen this before, but uh, e.target.name, and we'll return e.target.value. And then I can clean that up. Looks like I can clean that one up too. Oh, I called it event. I'll make sure it's e. Could I use a syntax using template strings like styled components do? Where app would you want me to use those template strings to start with? Would that be like the views? Um, or do you mean um, with these H functions? Starting there might help me uh, determine if they're okay to do. Um, it could maybe work. I've not done. I've not written any tag template literals myself. If you haven't looked into it yourself, um, the H function. I mean, not the H. Sorry, you wrote the H, and my brain just read it. Um, tag template liter literals are a function that takes a template literal as its first argument. Um, I haven't looked into how that works. If I can return a function, then yeah, I can make it work. Um, if I don't curry the H function, you could possibly make it work. Um, I guess if that's what you really wanted to do, you really wanted to write HTML and turn it into uh, virtual DOM nodes, uh, that might be a way to do it. In fact, I would encourage you to give it a try yourself see if you can make um, virtual DOM nodes with a tag template literal. Um, 
I have not tried it. It's not something I've really needed to experiment with, but uh, I, it would be interesting to see for sure. Um, yeah. Instead of a button here, I'm going to put an input and a uh, name will be a uh, name, <laughs> uh, ironic. And then we'll uh, give it an on input, I think is what we'll want to call instead. And then uh, that should get the, uh, I don't even know that I need to do that. What I can do, I think is uh, just call actions handle input and uh, there should be no text inside of the input so we'll leave that and we'll just uh, fire it it has no children if I was smart maybe I'd remove the um, somehow I would find a way to uh, not need to call this on something like that but let's give it a try I'm just curious Okay, so I ran into a new bug, it seems. Um, looks like... The, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, value. We need to update the value. Okay, not something I had thought of, but that makes sense. Um, should be state.name. Let's give that a try. Let's start there. Okay, it looks like it's failing on subsequent um, actions. So there might be something wrong with how I'm applying actions uh, to my app um, that I might have to change. Uh, let's see. E.target.value, state.name, actions.handle, input. Okay. Uh, let's, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up the source code of FOMO and, uh, oh, I copy pasted it. So we're going to have to get a little hacky here. Um, here's what I'm going to do. We are going to get in here and what we're going to do is we're going to console log the value. Uh, and then we will console log app state uh, before and we will console log it after and see what's going on Oh, okay, I get it. I see what's happening. Um, what's happening is because I'm re-rendering my entire DOM, I'm losing focus. Uh, that's an interesting uh, issue with how I'm choosing to make updates um, that I hadn't, um, hadn't thought before. Uh, so it wasn't that uh, my actions are wrong. It's that, like, if you see, I lose focus every time. So I was trying to hit other things. And uh, I couldn't, you know, it wasn't working. So I, it does look like our state updates properly, but because I'm rendering the app in such a naive way, uh, we lose focus on the input and we can't just keep giving it things. It's literally like tearing down the whole thing every single time. So I write like the K, it tears down everything and re-renders it with a K and I have to refocus and uh, it's really inefficient. So this is why DOM diffing is really important. And it actually, I think this taught me a little lesson that I hadn't thought before because, um, you know, things like inputs, I might not want to like, I might want to handle with a mutation like versus uh, immutably handing you a new input. And I suppose uh, you could do that. I could hand you a new input every time. Um, but I'd have to manage the focus of the application and that, that could be a pain in the butt. Thanks for, um, letting me eat too while I teach. I appreciate that. 
So let's make a. I need to make a note somewhere about that because it's a really uh, downside of FOMO, but that's why I'm learning. So Ahi's finally home. What did I miss? Well, Ahi, you know you can hit the "What you doing?" command. Could somebody hit that for him if he doesn't? Um. My friendly crack and ask, what are some good questions to ask in an interview? Uh, which side of the interview table are you on, Kraken? Let me know. Uh, I'm just writing down uh, the, this little bug here. So uh, thank you, Frosty, for typing that in. I really appreciate it. Um, Okay, that's actually, you know, that's such a big bug. Ah, he typed it in too. See, I love it when people learn to, uh, are able to help themselves. It's, uh, it's awesome. You're an interviewee. You have an on-site next week. Okay, well, congrats first that you got to the on-site. Well done. Uh, I assume that means you got past the, uh, the recruiter phase. Maybe you got past an initial phone screen. I call that the fraud detection stage. Um, just trying to make sure you're not a fraud. And you've got into an interview. I'm going to actually pop this up to monologue view to answer this question. So uh, what kind of good questions to ask in an interview? Um, first off, there's a couple really great resources out there on the internet. One of my favorites was written by Dave Smith. Uh, he's one of the co-hosts of Soft Skills Engineering. And it's like great. I can't remember what the... The link is, but it's like great questions to ask um, as the one being interviewed, like to ask of an engineering team. So I think some great questions to ask kind of are like this. One, a very simple one is how long you've been here and, and why are you still here? Maybe not those exact words, but something that's like, and tell me why you're still here or uh, what you love about the place or, or something. And specifically why they're still here is really important because we have um, we have a market, like an industry that has so many like jobs and they're available. Um, you know, people have choices. So if they're still at a company, that should say something about like why they're still there. So that can give you some insight to them and why they're still there. I want to say hi to a few people before I continue to answer the question. Hey, Titan VE, nice to see you. Uh, Giant Deeps, if I'm pronouncing that right, or Guy and Deeps, um, good to have you. Hello, how you doing? Um, so starting there, asking questions about like why they are there, like the people interviewing you, like they should have a good answer, right? Like they shouldn't just be like, um, I mean, maybe their answer is I get re paid really well, but you'd think like there's good jobs all around our industry. So if if they're a good developer, uh, they have choices and they shouldn't feel stuck. And so they should probably have a good reason for being there. Um, I think some other good questions to ask are things like about process and about uh, how the dev team uh, tends to work. Things like um, maybe asking about how to walk me through um, getting code into production. Like what kind of steps do you go through? Or I like asking things like um, how do you guys typically, or guys, sorry, caught myself right there. How does your team, um, how does your team make tech decisions? Like when uh, choosing new tech, is it uh, someone gets a new idea and just, runs off with it is it something you all sit down and do do you get a few days to hack and explore it um things like that i don't know what are some great questions that uh some of you have asked in your interviews uh put them in the chat for kraken and and help him or her out um once again i think uh i think kraken's is a gen can be a gender neutral term so sorry can't uh can't can't solidify on that but uh uh, Frosty writes, I've done a tech interview at Shopify two weeks ago and I asked about why they're using TypeScript with SAS. And I guess that was good because it shows both my curiosity and I've done some research about the company. And just for the record, I pass. Congrats, Frosty. Way to pass. Um, yeah, sometimes tech stack is, is a good question. 
I try and uh, suss out some cultural things too with my questions. Um, I'll I'll straight up ask like, what are what are your favorite things about the company? What are some I'll even ask sometimes, what are some things you would want uh, someone to know um, about coming in and, and things like that? I, I, you know, trying to get uh, as much info as I can because this is my one chance to determine if I'm a fit for them. You know, they're trying to figure out if I'm a, like, they're trying to figure out if I'm a fit for their team. I'm trying to figure out if they're a fit for me. Like, I don't want to work with people that I like. I know it won't be a good fit. Like on both sides, that's a bad situation, and I don't want to be unhappy. So trying to ask questions that suss out some of that cultural stuff and let me know uh, whether whether that fit's going to work together. Um, yeah. Other things I can tell you is uh, if you haven't done it already, go check out the Jobs Advice Channel on Reactiflux. Um, that's that's probably the go-to channel for honestly jobs advice, especially in React. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Granted, I started the channel and championed it, um, but there's lots of good people in there now, uh, giving good answers, and uh, I'm in there from time to time helping helping people out. So, um, people, like I said, if you got good questions, let them know. Um, one of our, our regular Twitch streamers, Nick Code, a uh, regular Twitch um, chat participants, the moderator of my channel, Nick Code Monkey, uh, Jen, she brought up a really interesting question to potentially ask um, that personally I'm not sure where I fit on, but I do get her reasoning, so I'm going to share it. Um, her question is she likes to ask, is there anything about this interview that gives you pause? or uh, raised a concern. And the reason she likes to ask this question is because it gives her an opportunity to address specifically uh, those problems if there's been a misunderstanding. And if there's just something that doesn't fit, it gives her a frame of mind too. Like, you know, for instance, if she has said this thing and the person's like, well, I'm concerned about that, but really it's a misunderstanding. Now she has a chance to uh, correct uh, the story, the narrative, and possibly walk away with a better impression than she otherwise would have. Uh, you know, you could imagine something not quite coming across correctly and then, you know, a week later they misremember it a little bit more or whenever they make the decision. I don't know. Um you know, and, and that going poorly versus uh, she might get some news like, well, we're actually really looking for this and you've only told us about that. She can then have a chance to, well, actually, I have done this or, oh, OK, that wasn't in the job description. I don't fit that, you know, and maybe there's a way to save some of that lost uh, time and energy to some degree. So I think it's a ballsy question in the sense of you're putting them on the spot to give you feedback right now. Um, not everyone's uh, excited to do that, uh, but also I think there's a risk in that it might come off as sounding like, oh, I'm not confident in what I said. I don't know, but that's me. Uh, I'm a cocky person, so to, in general, I don't like. I just mean cocky in that I'm I'm confident to some uh, to some degree in what I say and what I do, and um, and I do my best in an interview to project confidence in. So I don't think a question like that's quite comfortable for me, but it might work for you. Um, part of interviewing is understanding your strengths and what you bring as value to the table and playing into them. Um, while having good, um, like a good narrative, a good story around your weaknesses, right? Like everyone has weaknesses. And so we shouldn't, try and hide them so much as we should be like, well, here are the ones that I, I know and I'm working on this way. Here are the ones I just avoid by doing this. Like you should be prepared for those kinds of scenarios when you're in an interview. So I know that was a long answer. I hope that was helpful, uh, Kraken. Yeah, Kevin brings up a really good point. He says, you could rephrase it more like, is there anything I said you'd like me to clarify? That would be uh, great. Um, I think the only challenge with that has to do with like if the interviewer 
thinks they're perfectly understood of the misunderstanding, right? Um, which is where asking about concern would get that because you'd be like, I'm concerned about this. I'm 100% certain that's what you meant, right? So uh, you'd have to gauge the situation, but that could definitely be a, a softer way of uh, asking that question. But, um, but yeah, those are some ideas. Oh, your entry level, that actually, that changes some things too. Um, you'll wanna ask about expectations without seeming, um, without seeming like you're too good for something. Like for example, you wanna get things out of them like, tell me about a work day, like do they, do they work 60 hours a week? Are they expected to work weekends? Is there, um, what kind, like here's a great one. What do you do when someone breaks the build or the deploy uh, in prod? Because it's almost a rite of passage. Everyone does this at some point. But I worked at a company um, that actually would pass around this tiny sombrero. They called it the shame brero, and it had to be on your desk when you broke uh, prod. Um, and, you know, some some people might find that funny some people might find that really offensive like you shouldn't shame people for making mistakes it happens um so i don't know about asking about something that specific but like it might be helpful to kind of try and dig into those things because if you're trying to get like say your first job or a junior job or something like that there's there's just more that you don't know than you know and so don't be afraid to ask ask questions uh, i mean think about them ask them in a way that doesn't insinuate anything negative, but go out and get that information. It'll it'll make a big difference for you. And don't be afraid to negotiate salary. I know you didn't ask about that, but there's almost always more money on the table. It never hurts to ask for a little more. And if you don't ask, you're hurting yourself because you're not only not making that money now, you've now changed how much... Um, you now changed how much money you can get in a raise, right? 5% of an extra 5K, you know, it, it adds up. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask for more money. Ahi has the opposite question. Tonight, I guess we're just doing a Q&A, which is great. I love it. Um, so Ahi... Uh, there is a book by Joel Spolsky called uh, Smart and Gets Things Done. Um, it's all about trying to find people who are smart and gets things done. That's all That's all you're really looking for in an engineer, at least to him. Um, and it's a really short, quick read, so I would look it up, and um, you might be able to find a copy. That would be a great starting point. Um, Kraken at... I, I want to keep going on your question. I just want to address Kraken really quick. Um, continuous delivery prevent broken builds from being pushed to production. Um, it doesn't just have to be like broken in production. Uh, this was a job where we were just starting to do CDI, CD. And so, um, you know, that was a possibility. Now it would be something like you put a bug that like really screws things or like you screwed up a database or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, not Spooski, but Spolsky, Ahi. But uh, my point, Kraken, is there are things you can still fuck up royally. That's That just happens. That's why we continue to build better tools. It, it just does. Um, so, Ahi, what questions should I ask to get a great applicant? So, this is a really challenging question, and I haven't... I haven't actually, I've done a few interviews. I've done like six interviews as the interviewer. So I don't have a lot of experience with it and I'm, I'm hoping to get better. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna admit this right out front. Like it's really challenging to get a read um, on people. You're both on your best behavior and the whole interviewing process is really unnatural for a lot of people. Uh, for someone like me, who's extroverted, uh, easy to have small talk with, and, uh, you know, I can be charming, believe it or not. You know, like my wife laughs because she knows it's true. Um, it is true. Like, I can win over a room of people if I care to. Um, 
interviewing works well for someone like me because it plays into my strengths. But someone who's like really thoughtful, but maybe not uh, quick to speak out their thoughts or has lots of insights, but waits for more information. Uh, interviews don't don't play into their thing. So what I'm trying to tell you is like there's biases built into the process that are very difficult to uh, naturally overcome. And you need to be aware of these. You need to you need to realize there's kind of like four categories that you're going to end up with people in. You're going to have um, true negatives, people who uh, are just do not belong there. You need to weed them out as soon as possible. These are the people who don't have the tech stack you're looking for or even the experience to learn what you're doing. These are the people who like, they will fill out thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of resumes and never never get jobs because they just don't have the that kind of thing, right? Like the, the true negative. And then you'll have... Um, what you're worried about is you want to avoid false positives. That is, people who seem to be right for the job but aren't. You want to find true positives, right? People who both seem like they're good for the job and are. And it's acceptable to get false negatives. Those are people who would be good for the job but didn't appear to be good for the job. And so... Ah, that little that little square. I'll try and make it really quick, right? Like you can you can figure out this. Uh, what are what are the phenotype things? You know where you did the four things that diagram, right? Like you can have um, T F and uh, P N. You want you want true positives. You know this is what you want. Uh, I'm writing some. I'm making a little fancy here. Um, the 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 true negative is uh, avoid at all costs false positives should also be avoided cuz that's just going to cost you a shit ton of money and then uh, false negatives uh, these are acceptable it sucks but they're acceptable so that's kind of your diagram, right? Like I'm putting it up on the screen, right? Like uh, true positives are what you want. True negatives should never get in the door. False positives cost you a shit ton of money because they come into the job, they get started, and they just don't work out. And then false negatives are acceptable. Uh, these people across this little pattern, they're really not that different. The true positive and the false negative, they are, um, they're not that negative. Saul and Burnham, we are not specifically talking about your po our, our podcast episode, but the topic has has brought up uh, has been brought up. So um, false negatives are not the hardest so much as they are the basically um, it comes down to this. Uh, Derek Sievers of CD Baby kind of said. Uh, something about careers that kind of applies to interviews. He said, careers should really be a hell yes, and if it's not a hell yes, everything's a no, right? When you're thinking of something you want to do with the rest of your life, you know, the answer should be hell yeah, like that you're excited to do it if you're going to start a business or something like that. If you're not, if you're starting a business with anything other than hell yeah, um, as in like you want to do it, not that there aren't fears and stuff, but that you want to do it, right? Um if you're not starting from there, it's probably not the right thing, especially given how many hours you'll have to put in each week and, and that kind of thing. So this kind of applies to people you're going to interview, Ahi. You're going to interview someone and they're going to be like, well, they were kind of okay. They they were pretty strong here. Kind of like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you're waffling, the give them an initial no. Like, if you're really, like, and my reason I say initial no is, like, you don't want to waffle. Eventually, you might come across someone that doesn't make you waffle at all. That's your true positive. Those are the people you want, right? But that false negative, like, that might be someone who could be good, but you, you weren't certain about. And you can always revisit it. Um, for example, uh, in my latest job hunt, um, I interviewed with CodePen. And CodePen originally turned me down. And I just told them, that's okay. Uh, you know, if, if it doesn't work out with the person you've chosen, 
to move forward with, let me know. And about a month and a half later, or a month later or so, they came back. And I th and we went through the process, and I actually ended up getting an offer from CodePen. Um, it didn't quite work out uh, with their uh, with with what would be best for me but the, the point being I was probably a false negative for them at first or something about me was a negative and uh, you know they were able to revisit it at some point so uh, that that's kind of what I'm saying I know that's not specific questions the next thing you want to do about questions is I recommend this it, rather than going and finding some puzzles that act as a proxy for the work you're doing uh, I like to, as I'm working on problems at work, if I come across something that's an interesting problem that's encapsulated enough that I can have them work on it for 45 minutes an hour or more, like, but it's 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 something like um, that would make a good interview, or you know, I can walk them through enough of it to kind of get a gist of their programming skill. Those are things I like to take note of as I'm kind of working on things. Um, uh, kind of want to have the back once you get in this mode of like hey um, I'm gonna have to interview people like keep some something ticking in the back of your mind that says um, okay maybe I'll come across something that'd be good today so uh, that way they're getting like a good sense of the work they'd actually be doing on the job you're getting a sense of how quick they can maybe like adapt to it and what their problem-solving skills is and um, that's just my recommendation. You can definitely do like algorithmic data structure puzzles, but they often don't test what you're actually working on. Yeah, real world problems versus the made up stuff. I think the made up stuff is really great for training yourself. Like I have, I have it right here. Uh, give me one second, I gotta reach around everything. I've probably shown this on stream before. Um, and I actually like looking through this book just for learning material and getting better. But uh, this is the interview Bible, people, especially for the big companies like Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, well, maybe not Netflix, but Google, like working through these kinds of problems, you'll need to be able to do these to get jobs at those companies. Um, I, I just want to, I just want to say you need to be able to do these for those algorithmic heavy companies. And, and they actually have like... Some specific notes on Google, Facebook, uh, Palantir, and certain companies in here. But uh, yeah, as Kevin says in there, they're good for learning, maybe not the best for interviews. Hi, Tally. My cat has this habit of she will reach up, especially if I'm at my standing level and I'm standing, she'll reach up and claw the back of my ass. I'm not shitting you. And like just rah, try and like destroy me. It's It really sucks. And it comes out of nowhere because she's a silent killer. Um, she was just there. That's why I said, Hey, Tally, um, getting back to it. Like this is good learning material. Um, your eyes got sleepy. It is sleepy. Like, and you want to know what makes it worse? Ah, he, um, see, she just did it to, to my wife. She just murdered my wife. Uh, not, not completely. She's still alive, but my cat just, that's, that's why you're hearing the fuckers in the background, right? Like it, it is thick. It's like 600, 700 pages. Um, it's written in Java, so you do need to take the time to at least be able to read a bit of Java and then be able to uh, um, translate it to JavaScript in order to do it, and I, I've done that. But um, as far as the differences of editions, Kraken, I have no idea. I don't have the 5th uh, edition. Uh, I have the 6th edition, um, but it was worth the money. Honestly, it was worth the money. Um, I know I've talked about this before. I maybe haven't talked about it on stream. But uh, before going to Fastly, I was making 80 k a year at the company I was working at. And when I got to Fastly and I went through all this process with them and similar processes with like Stripe and Amazon and Netflix and New Relic and Facebook and all these places, um, all of them asking me questions like this. Uh, my salary... At Fastly, it was 150k. I almost doubled my salary. Like when you're trying to get into real software engineering, um, I hate take. Let me take that back. I'm sorry. When you're when you're getting into the job titles of software engineering, I don't want to say real. Like 
Um, just the job title, and maybe there are challenging problems. Uh, web development is plenty fucking challenging. We all know that. Um, but what I'm trying to say is like these companies kind of have these tiers. If you're trying to get into these bigger tiers, um, unfortunately, this is kind of the this is kind of the standard. You'll be a better dev. Like you literally will become a smarter dev. Um, it may not help you fix like what you work on day to day, but it might help you have better patterns as you continue to grow in your craft. So uh, don't knock it till you try it. Stick with it and and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that being said, we probably need to turn interviewing on its head a bit. It's uh, it's just tough, and I don't know that there's a great solution to it. Do this. Take notes as you do it. I do. I, I take notes. I write things down. I actually straight up have a repo. Have you have you guys seen this repo? If you go to if you go to, um, I'll probably crash my own internet here in a second. Oh, let me let me put out pull out to the to the browser so you can see it. Uh, I have a repo called. Um, I'll have to go to my profile I think to find it. Uh, I keep a repo called when I am a leader and uh, I kind of had this idea that everyone might have a uh, their own when I am a leader um, repo because you you really should at least somewhere store the little tidbits of nuggets of knowledge that you get and uh, I have this section here interviewing and hiring and as I interview people or as I go through interview processes uh, I write things down like uh and like for instance this one right here today i was told by a story by a junior dev who had scheduled a skype interview the interviewer called the dev but accidentally the phone call was received on his phone not his computer when he asked if they could restart the call so that he could have it more optimally on his laptop the interviewer would not allow him to do so because they were on a time schedule this was asinine both the dev and the interviewers were in suboptimal situations for the hours the interview took. What a waste of both people's time. The interviewer could not get an accurate picture of the dev, and the dev could not represent themselves properly. Don't be this interviewer. If you want the best candidates, you have to make your environment work in such a way that candidates can do their best. Work to take the extra minute to get things right rather than waste your time and their time. Like, that was a very specific scenario. It didn't happen to me, but uh, someone in Jobs Advice mentioned it, and I was like, that is something I, I need to remember. So I wrote it down, and uh, every once in a while I come back to this and I add to it, and maybe that'd be something helpful for you. Uh, I have this dream that, like, maybe someone will fork this and uh, give, me, give me their advice, uh, like, as a pull request. But uh, that's, that's my idea, is something like that. Does that make sense? And uh, Kraken, don't don't feel sorry for the digression. Um, the whole reason I named this more than you asked for is I think as um, I think engineers we can really get fixated on tech and on code, and uh, honestly, the things that are going to make you the strongest engineer possible in the long run, like in your career as a teammate and maybe even a better person or a lot of these soft skill things. So, um, and for me as a former pastor and teacher, like this really kind of, uh, I really enjoy these parts of the stream. I know they're maybe not, I hope they're okay with you. I don't know that they're your favorite. I think I, I tend to lose viewers when I go on these little discussions, but I don't care because it's, it's meaningful to me to be able to provide, um, be able to provide at least thought, maybe not answers, but like some thoughtfulness to difficult uh, questions. And uh, I think we should all practice that a little bit more, but that's my personal philosophy. And I understand if if other people don't, uh, are not interested in that or would prefer to watch something else or do something else, that's fine. Um, but um, but don't, don't feel bad for asking that question. It was a great question. And uh, I hope you come back and, and ask some more. And I hope you uh, nail that interview. And my friendly Kraken, thank you for now following. So that's how you win followers, people. One person at a time.
see, you've got two, you've got two engineers there saying soft skills are really important. Um, <laughs> I he goes to check it out. Yeah, you know, I I could do that too. I could pump some music. Actually, did did y'all see the little rap uh, that I started um, on Twitter? Uh, I might have that up on my machine and be able to share it to you. Um, uh, I started writing more of it, and I was so bummed. I wrote these four lines while I was driving around town yesterday. I wrote them in my head, and I got home, and I tried to play them to the beat, and they just didn't fit. And sometimes that happens when you're writing music or, or something like that. Sometimes you'll come up with something that's amazing, and you get to the beat, uh, and you're just like, ah, shit, it's one syllable off, and you can't can't find the right word or right phrasing to make it work. So I'm still working on that little little ditty I did. If you, if you haven't heard it, let me know. Let me know, uh, maybe, um, not thumbs down. That would suck. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to take a bite. I'm still hungry, y'all. Quite cold by now. Um, so Kevin says, soft skills are, um, one of the biggest focuses of interviews at Infinite Red. <laughs> Luckily, I was grandfathered in, he says. I've met Kevin. He's at least got soft part of soft skills. No, I'm just kidding, man. Uh, totally a joke. Um, soft skills are really challenging, right? Like, um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm reading the threads as they come in. Uh, you know, soft skills are really ch challenging. Uh, I don't know what you're working on, Kevin, but I know for me, I'm always working on being um, less uh, reactive with my with just with who I am um, I tend to I tend to speak in order to think I'm a verbal processor that gets me in trouble uh, because I will have 10 immediate thoughts when someone says or does something um, and I really have to take a moment to just literally sometimes bite my tongue inside my mouth to hold myself back and just give myself a moment to think or uh, or maybe I need to go walk away from a situation and then come back to have the right mindset. Um, so those are the things uh, I'm working on. Kevin's like, I'm a robot. I've been working on being more human. Well, I think you're doing a good job. Um, keep it up, man. So Frosty says, uh, to be honest, this is this more than you asked is why I'm here. Programming is something you can learn anywhere nowadays, but some reflections and opinions about things we don't find really easily out there. Well, good. I'm glad that um, I'm glad that you are um, one. I'm glad that you enjoy that part of it. That makes me happy. It makes me feel like I'm uh, like I'm bringing something of value. And um, and yeah, uh, I just personally think what I can maybe offer the industry as a whole, and what I kind of try and do on Twitter, and I'm trying to do here, is. Uh, I, I think some of the skills I can bring to the table that are more meaningful are these kinds of things, these thoughtful discussions. Um, and I think that comes from my previous careers. Um, honestly, some of you that, that are in this chat right here, I look up to as coders. Um, Brownie fed earlier is someone I look up to as a, as a, as a coder, his ability to like, just keep cranking shit out blows excuse me, uh, blows my mind. It always has been impressive to me. Um, but I'm not the person who just cranks shit out all the time. Or, uh, you know, there's plenty of people on the, on Twitter that, uh, like, uh, blow my mind too. Like, uh, Kent C. Dodds never seems to quit. Or, uh, Sarah Ito literally never quits, you know? Um, uh, he, she, uh, she is an amazingly productive person. And, um, I don't think I could even co compete with that, you know, so, uh, I don't think I'm supposed to, but I think we can all bring slightly different things to the table. Brownie feds, I'm still here. I saw that you released that early, er, earlier. Uh, good job. Um, and, uh, Brownie feds screencasted while you were live streaming. Well, good, man. Make that money. Make that money, money. Um, salt and burn them says I have the same problem with thoughts and being blunt. So you have lots of thoughts but you're not like necessarily like delivering them in the best way possible. I'll get to that in a second one to get to all the 
all the chats. Uh, ah, he says, I'm actually a bot. Nobody has realized this yet, too. Well, you're a bot that's out doing shopping, so I think that's kind of impressive. Are you, like, the next level uh, of, like, Instacart or something like that? I don't know what y'all have down in Australia, so you'll have to tell me how your, um, how that, how that works down there. Um, so, uh, to be fair, I can be pretty blunt, too. Um, oh, Dan Abramov is nuts, too. Like, Jason Miller, like... Literally, like, there's just so many. I, I don't think I so much forgot as there's literally too many to name. I'm about to start working with one. Uh, I'm about to start working with Ken Wheeler. The guy never sleeps, you know? Um, there's just, some people just have a gift. Um, I have a different gift. I have a gift of uh, being able to think critically about situations and, you know, form a, a linear and thoughtful opinion. Whether it's correct or not, I don't know. Um, but I do want to address being blunt. So before being a pastor, um, I was always blunt, always, like by default. Um, and now I've learned to measure that a lot more. I still choose to be blunt at times. In fact, Chris, I've been blunt with you a few times, right? You, you know that, right? But I've tried to always do it with, with two things. And this is what I recommend, maybe not to Chris, but to everyone. Um, sometime in life, you will have to tell the truth. I do so without do so while pursuing goodness, maybe not niceness. There's a difference, right? Like a nice person might not tell someone the hard thing they need to hear. Sorry about that, folks. Um, and always make sure you're doing it out of like out of love, right? Like uh, or, or out of care. If you're doing it out of spite, there's really no point. Like if I tell someone who's acting like a jackass that I don't actually care about like they're just being a shitty person like that is wasted energy you know um, not to make this biblical because I'm not trying to make it biblical but you know uh, a phrase that always comes to mind is like don't throw your pearls to swine like and, and the idea is like don't throw your good things to something that doesn't care about it and good things could be your energy your time and your words but if there's someone you actually care about, you think you can make an impact, you know, consider how to be blunt. Like there are ways to tell truth that are better than other ways. And I think anyone who wants to become like a, a leader has to work on developing some kind of um, truth telling ability without um, being malevolent. Like, you will be somewhat injurious. That's what truth does sometimes. It hurts us. It stings. It's, it's, it's painful. But we can do so without being evil. Um, it's not an easy thing. I don't have it mastered. I don't know if anyone does. Um, but, but yeah, that's kind of, that's what I would, I would say to that. Hello, Mr. Albany. We got a new follower. Thank you. Um, thank you for following. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So that's, the, I guess that's my advice on that. <laughs> Maybe I should just start turning my, my Twitch stream into two hours of Kyle uh, does some uh, uh, questions and some answers. Um, this reminded me, so early in the week I posted about, you know, meet your friend, uh, meet your Twitter friends in real life if you ever had the chance. It's a great thing. Um, but Take some chances. I, I am still eating because I talk so much, brownie fed. Um, Jason's like, how do you do that, man? Like, I don't know. Um, I'm not actually even hungry, really, at this point. It's more like I still have my dinner here. I might as well, like, put it in my belly, right? Um, getting back to what I was saying, uh, another thing I decided to do is I've started to reach out to people who I want to get to know better. Like, I know them on Twitter a little bit, but I want to get to know them better. And I've started to make uh, set up video calls with them. Uh, I did one with Curtis Kempel, who works at MLS on their engineering team. He's their team lead. Um, he just put out a really amazing Medium article today that you need to go find him on Twitter and go find the article and read it. I don't want to give you any spoilers if you haven't. Um, it's really compelling and well worth the read. Curtis Kempel, uh, go find him. That's his, that's his Twitter tag, I think. Kurt Kempel, I think. Uh, Kurt Kempel or Curtis Kempel, go find it. Um... He's still there, uh, Brownie. He's just, he'll be leaving. He's moving. 
um, and they, he won't be able to stay on. He'll be doing some like 10 hour contract work for him for a while, like 10 hour a week. Uh, but that we, we talked about that this week. Um, so I don't know why that popped up. If a raid is offensive, moderate in the chat. John Major C is now following. Uh, thank you, John. Nice to have you here. Um, I don't know what this raid crap is. I've never, uh, I've never seen that. There you go. Thank you for the link, uh, Kevin. Yeah, he posted a Medium article. That's really amazing. Please go read it. Be sensitive about it. It's really great. Um, you know, we did a video chat, and that inspired me to like just reach out to a bunch of my friends, and I had a really fun hangout with. Uh, I had a really fun hangout with um, Ken Wheeler, uh, Curtis, uh, Gary Bonofsky. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. Could be wrong. Uh, Gary out of Ohio, uh, Harry Wolf showed up out of New York, um, uh, Jen joined us, Nick Code Monkey, and, um, and, uh, oh, who else, uh, Andrew Del Preet, uh, joined us all the way from Alaska, and it was just really fun, so if you have a group of people like that, I suggest you do that too. We've got Durantula, that's kind of a fun name, Duran Duran and a Tarantula, uh, Durantula following. Thank you. Um, this raid, really cool. RW Gr Grim. I don't. What were you raiding? What were you doing? Let me know in the chat. Um, but glad you're here now. Um, a raid is when a bunch of people start watching a stream all at once. Sometimes their comments can be crazy. Okay. See, um, I do play some video games. Not much anymore. But I did. I was a huge Destiny One player. And there's there's actual raids in the game, and so to me, like a raid has a specific meaning. Thank you for giving me the Twitch context of a raid. So that's awesome. Oh, Chris, yes, uh, Chris mentions Jen, Nick Code Monkey, and I, uh, Chris is Salt and Burnham, are speaking together in June. Uh, Jen told me about that today. That's fantastic. They're going to be doing at Syntax Conf in Charleston, South Carolina, June sixth through eighth. If you're down in the southeast, go check it out. Um, I'm trying to keep up with everyone. Zerkan is now following. Thank you, Zerkan. Thank you for being here. Um, so yeah, uh, Kevin is explaining what a raid is. Lucas, raid helps streamers and send their viewers. Nice. Um, Zerkan typically starts when another streamer ends and sends their viewers. Well, I, I don't know where you came from, uh, but I really appreciate it. Appreciate whoever sent you here. Um, I should like pat him on the back, thank him, buy him a beer. I don't know why I gave the phone signal for buying him a beer. Buy him a beer. Um, Holy shit, people! Like, did did uh, Sean Larkin stop st streaming or something? Because this is easily the most people I've ever had. This is like this is like like twenty more than the other, the highest I've ever had. So thank you for being here. Um, for those of you who might be here for the very first time, since you're coming here from another stream, uh, this is called More Than You Asked For. You can see it in the top top uh, bar, but. Um, Oh, R W. He he himself or she himself sent. Thank you. I don't know what your gender is. I'm always trying to be inclusive. Uh, uh, you might want to turn on raid alerts on Streamlabs. I will check that out. I didn't catch it. I'm so sorry. Thank you for the new follower. Um, uh, my point being, uh, this is more than you asked for. Meaning, uh, I do teach JavaScript. I focus on like React and other things. Like tonight, I walked through uh, a new JavaScript UI library I built that. Um, is very much a work in progress, uh, but we walked through the code and we had some fun there. Uh, but the more than you asked for is really important to me too, where um, we had someone um, uh, Kraken in the chat. I, I don't know if you could scroll up and see it, but Kraken was asking about like, what should I ask in an interview as the person being interviewed? And then we talked a little bit about the interview process and how we try and find good candidates. And, and I really like focusing on spending some time to talk about uh, challenging questions and trying to answer them in, in thoughtful ways. Um, we can always, we can go learn about how to code in all sorts of places. Um, Egghead IO, front end masters, plural site, Udemy, whatever. Um, uh, code daily. I think, uh, I think, uh, Jason will want me to share that one. Um, but you know, sometimes it's not obvious where we can go to get advice on just being better, um, engineer humans better engineers better people right like not just technically so uh just wanted to give you the lowdown of, of what's going on here and why you're not seeing a ton of code on at the moment so so how does my ui library compare to other ones um it's not comparable right now in the sense that um 
it doesn't really do enough to even be um be in the same league i just wanted to test my own mental knowledge of can i find a way to declaratively render ui and update state and that's this library here it's called fomo because we all have so much fomo about javascript libraries right like i just thought it was a fun little play on words another javascript framework for your fomo and uh, right now it just basically um, creates virtual dom nodes using uh, an h function it's purposely curried so you can do some partial application and and build up your app with some reusable functions um, as you can see here and then it just takes a very single oh thank you thank you frosty frosty's watching out for me frosty man i love it when y'all watch out for me um, y'all know i'm classically bad at this it's like it's like the thing i fuck up the most on screen uh, but uh, it's just got an h function uh, to make our virtual dom nodes and then like you can build a view like this um, and then an app uh, an app is just a function that takes uh, our dom entry our view our actions and our state and renders our our state and like I was showing them this um, this is a very simple app I can show show you the code um, what we have here is we've pulled the h function off in the app we've made a few uh, a few partially apply oh this is the HTML that's right I'm doing it right in a script tag so the comments don't always work um, actually I can do this instead in the HTML that should work maybe I'll just get rid of it no big deal um, and we noticed a couple things that were wrong about my my UI library already, which is great. These are things I'm going to work on. Um, but what we have here is uh, we have an initial an initial state of FOMO. We have a handle input action that will get passed to our view here. Um, this is all done behind the scene. This uh, binding of state, this binding of actions, this binding of state. Um, it kind of happens under the hood, and I can walk through it again here really quickly. Um, but we just have a wrapping div an h1 and an input and every time we update the input we're going to change the state name by essentially every time state changes the whole app gets re-rendered it's very inefficient and uh, the big but right now it was just fun to figure out how to even do so uh, I haven't like added dom diffing or any kind of efficiencies in it right now so what you'll see is I'm gonna clear the e the whole dom will re-render you, you could actually see that on the screen if you were paying attention to the div. It re-rendered, and we could see what the app was before. This is the event that uh, got fired by our action. Um, and because the whole app re-renders, I lose focus. So that's one of the downsides of, of my library at the moment. So this is not a drop-in for anything yet. Um, I, don't, I, I, pray, I pray no one tries to put this in uh, production because that would just be uh, a bad time. You, you, you know, <laughs> every time I say bad time, it makes me think of the South Park episode where they're learning to ski in the Winter Olympics. Also, they kind of sp sparked this in my mind, but, you know, if you pizza while you're supposed to french fry, you're going to have a bad time, right? Like, um, if you use this in, in your app, other than to for funsies, you're going to have a bad time, people. Um but my point being, like, this was just an interesting mental challenge for me to try and figure out uh, how can I make an application uh, with nothing but JavaScript, um, without a library? Uh, can I can I make it somewhat declarative? So um, my big inspiration for this, like, one of my big inspirations other than React, because you all know that I love React, and, man, I'm so excited to be back on React. You guys don't even understand. Going to Formidable... I'm so stoked. My first project is Electron, React, and MobX. Um, uh, I already know two of those like amazingly well. I've done a, uh, Electron apps with React in the past. That's going to be fun. Um, I'm going to have to brush up on some MobX this week. I haven't used it in production. Feel free to drop me your tips and shit in the in the chat or on Twitter this week. I'll, I'll really appreciate it. But um, I'm just excited to be back in React. And then uh, I, you know, I might get to learn some React Native, some GraphQL. Over time, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to be back on the um, it's gonna be exciting to be back on the uh, on the things I love. So Eric Vicente asks a really great question. He asks, um, uh, "Wait, I'm confused. Re-rendering causes you to lose focus. Why is that?" So I'll walk you through the um, I'll walk you through the FOMO code here in a second, and it should make a lot of sense. The reason 
re-rendering causes us to lose focus is that I'm actually removing all the DOM every time on render and replacing it entirely. As I mentioned, I don't have any DOM diffing right now that like um, correctly figures that out. And I'm not doing a mutation, I'm doing an immutable change. So um, it's just suboptimal right now. Um, and I will work probably the rest of this week on trying to find more optimal ways uh, for fun. Um, but if I go find the, the FOMO code itself, uh, we'll pull this over here and we'll look through the index file again. Um, the H, the H function should pretty be pretty easy to understand. We get an HTML tag, we can add props and any, any other arguments given to the last function are children. And then this function here, node to DOM, just takes uh, virtual DOM nodes and converts them into real DOM nodes, uh, which needs some uh, adjustments as well. Why would it do that? Oh, it looks like somewhere in there I added something that um, messed something up somewhere. That's okay. Oh, I see it. I see it. Dubrik is now following. Thank you, Dubrik. Thank you for uh, joining. I really, what is going on? Give me my cursor back. Um, so this is why we lose our focus right here on lines 32 through 35, Eric. Um, what I'm doing is uh, we're clearing the entry, like we're moving all the DOM and then uh, we're appending the DOM again with our new state. Uh, yeah, this is my new framework. I don't use it. This is just me experimenting with how do I make a JavaScript UI library. I wanted to give it a try I, while I had a couple days off. I thought it would be a really good mental exercise to uh, work through. Um, and I think it's really fun to kind of do this. Uh, you know, it's very unlikely ever in my life I'll be a React core member or something like that. I just don't understand it enough. Um, and I just thought this was a really great thing to check out. TechTerra12 is now following. Thank you, TechTerra. Really appreciate it. Um, man, uh, RW Grimm, thank you for the hookup. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sending all these people uh, this way. Uh, thank you. Um, and so I'll walk through this again. Uh, in fact, I want to make a few changes here anyways. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this and I'm just going to replace it with this. And then I don't even need this line save us a few a uh, few bytes right okay this is the function that kind of gets everything going uh, the app takes an entry which is the dom node we are going to insert our application into um, in this case uh, in my example i was doing it into a div with an id of app a view is a function in fomo and it's a function with the sign signature of view takes uh, actions returns PyQueen314 is now following. Thank you, PyQueen. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, and kudos on the 314. If you had any other number there, that would that would seem disingenuous. So good job. Uh, a view is a function that takes actions and state and returns um, our, our virtual dot, v nodes. We'll call it that. That's the signature of a view. Um, Actions is an object, uh, but it's an object of like shape. Of, it just has methods. And uh, the methods in it have a specific, um, actually, actions is an object. So let's, uh, I need to document this somewhere for people. I haven't done that yet. I've been a bad person. Um, please forgive me. Um, okay, so an action has the signature of a value, returns a state, and this needs to return a partial state object. So you don't need to return the entire state, you just need to return some part of the state and it'll get merged in, and you can actually see that down here on line 55. And lastly, state is just a, an object, is just a, an object of keys and values uh, like you would expect, it's a plain JavaScript object. And so these things get passed into the app function. And, and what we do is we start with this. We're going to create a, a state variable that we're going to mutate within the, um, 
within the closure created by our function. Um, within the within the block it's not a true closure I'm not actually returning you anything and not giving you access you don't have access but it's not a true closure so I, I want to be clear about that but um, we're maintaining some state um, and then because everything in my app is curried I get these benefits in that this this render entry is a partially applied uh, render function right and what this means is that because I've given it the entry, it's always waiting. This function is always waiting to append new views into the same spot in our application. And I thought that was kind of really smart. Uh, most like react dom .render, that method has the arguments flipped. It gives you the component first and then the entry. And it's like, wait a minute, the component could change, but the entry very rarely would. So I flipped them, you get the entry first, and then I'm just gonna give it new views. And that's a way to update it, right? So I have my entry, and if I hand it a new view, um, it just knows to, oh, I got a new view, time to render this here. And so uh, that is, um, that's what I did here. Uh, Pi Queen says, uh, I want to, want to see some React in action. Uh, I'll probably bring that to you next week. Um, I would really like to actually cover, um, one of my plans is uh, now that we have the new context API, I was thinking it'd be really neat to take a small app and try and convert a Redux app to a context app. Because I think, I think a lot of people will be doing stuff like that for work pretty soon. So um, I thought that would be interesting. I won't hit it this week. But stay tuned, and I hope you'll come back another week, and we can do that. And Nico Monkey is finally here. Uh, hey, Jen, welcome, and uh, congratulations to your acceptance, along with uh, Chris. Chris, I don't know how you're staying up, man. I'm really impressed. Um, but congratulations to the two of you on being accepted to speak at SyntaxConf. Great job. Well done. Um, so, uh, yeah. All right, so we have our partially applied uh, render entry. We're gonna reuse this uh, when actions are fired to pass a new view into. Now, because we order our view with actions first and state next, what we realized, what I realized was like actions are really stable. Actions don't change much. Like you'll always just have your set of methods that update state, right? But state changes all the time. It's really unstable. So views take actions first, so the actions can be bound and applied, and that's what you have here. We take our view that you've given me, and I'm gonna take the actions you have, and I'm gonna make them something else. I'm gonna turn them into something that works with FOMO, and I'm going to partially apply them to the view. So now I have a function that already has the actions ready to go. All I need to hand this, this function is state. And every time I get a new state, I get a new view. Every time I get a new view, I hand that to my render entry, like this partially applied function here. And um, uh, I pass it to this function here, and boom, I have a new new app uh, UI, right? Um, it kind of it works like this, right? Like someone fires an action. That action derives a new state. That new state is passed to a view that already has um, what it needs. Uh, actually, I, I should diagram this, right? Action fired. We get a new state. This is given to a view, given to our view. Our new uh, view is given to our, our entry which fires render and we get our new app. I can't spell apparently. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, actually let me switch real quick so you can see it better. Uh, we're, we're looking on this page here. Sorry, it's really hard to work a mirror. So um, that's the wrong page. This is the right page. There we go. Action gets fired. We get a new state. New state is given to our view. Our view is given to our entry. Our entry fires the render, and our render fires our new app. Sorry, that was horrible. Maybe someday I'll learn how to do graphics on the fly. Doubt it.
Hope you're okay with that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how this works. So let me kind of finish what's going on here. Uh, we bound our first actions and we take our very first state and we render the first view. That's what this is. We immediately render the very first view. So we take our entry. Uh, if we if we look at this the other way, we pass our state to our view. Our view renders our virtual DOM nodes. Our DOM nodes are given to our entry. Our entry runs that all and we attach real DOM. Ah, oh, thank you. Man, I'm so bad at this. Going again. We take our application state, the first state. We hand it to our view that's already got the actions uh, with it. And uh, we take our new like view that's been fired and we know what virtual DOM we're gonna get. And we pass that virtual DOM to our render function that's already got the entry and boom, we get our very first, um, we get our very first um, uh, application, right? We get our UI. And then this is where kind of the magic happens, this bind actions function. We've taken the actions that you've given me, look that the signature is, is a value, returns a function that takes a state, and you return me a partial state object. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck with that a little bit behind the scenes. Um, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take your actions, I'm gonna make an array out of the keys, and then I'm gonna create a new object if you follow all the way down from reduce. Maybe a better way to read this would be uh, something like this, I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna reduce this down to a new, new, new object that has your bound actions, but I'm gonna change it. Um, and I'm gonna get to your, uh, I'm gonna get to your chat in a second. I just want to get through this. Um, what we do is we we get our current action with the the key that's uh, that like the current key, right? Like we're mapping over the keys. So we take our key, we get the associated action, the actual function. We get the value by going through the hash and using that key and this is a function. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna return you that new object with a new function, but it's gonna use the function you gave me. I'm giving, I'm giving the app functions based on the functions you give me. This is the thing I'm massaging. You've given me this one function. I'm gonna make sure that fires the way it's expected, but I'm gonna modify them a little bit to update the state inside of FOMO. So what happens is I change them to an arity of one. Um, I, I take your value and uh, I expect, uh, this is what happens. I take that value, this value here, you see up here on, on line 42. I take your value and I'm gonna hand it to this new function. So it gets passed here. And what it does is it takes the action, your original action, right? and it applies it properly. It applies the value and the current app state. Um, and what it does with when it fires this is it gives me that partial state. That partial state is merged onto the current app state and I update the app state held in closure right here. So state has been updated. You fired an action, I took your value, I ran your original action function inside of my modified functions and I derived a new state. So I have the new state what did I do? Well, I have my new state, and you remember that chart? I take my state, I pass it to the view with the original actions in, so now I have a, a realized DOM, realized virtual DOM, right, with actions and state, right? And then I pass that to my partially applied render entry, so that gets, my, my virtual DOM gets passed to the right entry, and boom, I have a new, I have a new, um, I have a new state, like, I mean, a new UI. And that's, that's kind of how this works. And I'm, I'm returning these bound actions right here because, um, well, one, this is how reduce works. We always want to return our hash. Um, and that's eventually what gets returned all the way from bind actions past the view, blah, 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 blah. I hope that's not too confusing. It probably is, but I hope I did a pretty good job of explaining like why the partially applied uh, functions are so useful because they get reused, right? Like I'm always going to pass my new virtual nodes into um, the same entry. Uh, I'm going to take my original view, which isn't really going to change um, other than when state changes what the result is, right? The view doesn't change. A view in this case is just the accumulation of all the potential virtual nodes and state and actions determine what actual nodes uh, you give to the render. And so, yeah, 
that's how this works. And that's how I was able to do this all in just 57 lines of code. I mean, if I if I pull out the, this isn't normally there, right? And, uh, and I actually, I think I'm down to 50. Oh, I, I split this on uh, other lines. That's why. There we go, 56, we saved a line. So um, that is what's uh, how FOMO works. And because I'm totally replacing the DOM every time, as, as Eric saw, um, that's why I lose focus every time. So um, Jen would probably be, and, and Chris, Salt and Burnham would probably be completely disappointed that uh, uh, this is completely inaccessible. I'm sorry. But as, as I get better at this, as I learn more about it, uh, you know, I don't know if I'll keep developing FOMO past like this week. Uh, maybe I will. I have no intentions of making it production ready or competitive. Um, that is not a burden I really care about carrying right now. Um, but it's been a really great mental exercise. And I encourage you, like if, if there's something you want to try building just for the mental exercise, do it. So, all right. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go back through these uh, little chit chat between uh, some people. Um, I love your smile filled die. Yeah, those are my very shitty arrows, Kevin. Um, those were not intended to be smiles, but it works. Like right, it looked like the uh, the people who use like um, uh, equals for their smiles. That's great. Um, uh, oh thug what pen are you using like my actual pen uh chris i am using a pilot g2 uh here let me go to monologue mode uh, i don't know if this makes it any better uh, i'm using a bic pilot g2 i think it's a bic i could be wrong no idea it's just something i had in a cup somewhere it's it's a gel pen of some sort kind of it works um oh thug muffin if i didn't already say this he lives in portland too cool Hit me up on Twitter. Maybe we can get coffee or beer sometime. Uh, Pie Queens out here in Boulder represent. I know a lot of people out there in Boulder. Um, I, I feel like I learn more and more each day. Um, some some good buddies out there like uh, Kai Hohenberger and Sonia Gupta are out in that area. Fastly hoodie. Yeah, this is uh, this is my previous uh, company. I start a new job on Monday uh, for Formidable, um, and I'm gonna get some Formida swag. I'm hoping there's a hoodie in there. Hoodies are like my favorite thing. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, I love hoodies because uh, I tell my wife they're like they're like a hug for your head. They're like a hug for your head. I love that feeling. Um, I believe that Nick Code Monkey said that's pretty badass about um, FOMO about what I did. Um, so that's I, I I hope that's what that was about. Uh, people learning about my desk setup. Yeah, I have an adjustable desk. Sometimes some weeks you'll see me standing up. Um, and let's see, you got, uh, you got to start somewhere down. With, yeah. Um, Brownie fed, uh, go check, uh, check it out. Brownie fed loves to teach too. He's got this website called code daily IO. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're curious about doing like create Re uh, react or react native stuff, he's got so much, uh, stuff, uh, sensational. Hello. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, uh, really, uh, really appreciate having everyone here. Always do. You know that. Um, uh, thank you for appreciating the beard. The beard is, uh, you know, my, it's my icon. Like literally, do you see this right here? Like, can you see the, oh, you know, you can't see it. Hold on. I'll bring it in the screen. Can you, uh, uh, can you see this right here? You see the little, little beard. That is my icon. Like that's, that's literally, um, that is literally how I define myself on the internet in a way is my beard. So I'm glad you appreciate it. Um, uh, Thug says actually using Fastly Day great. They are a great company. Um, I just got a really great opportunity with Formidable. Um, I'm gonna go work with some really talented, some of the best people in JavaScript right now, and uh, I'm just really excited to to about that. Uh, plus, hoodies have the kangaroo pocket. I suppose. Uh, it, this doesn't attach if you have the uh, um, if you have the uh, like I do prefer the zipper down I don't want the pullover 
right? Like, I don't know about other people. Maybe other people like the pullovers. I really like the zipper down because, you know, you, you never know. You might have a good T-shirt under here that you need to show off, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Chris is uh, Chris is a dev from Detroit. He's got a podcast called Tales from the Script. Um, it's a fun little take on uh, front-end uh, dev and stuff like that. Um Arsena man, Arsena Arseny Jasavic, Arseny Jasavic, Arseny Jasavic. I I'm definitely messing up the accents there. Thank you for following though. Um but yeah. Um Yeah, go check out his podcast. Kevin says, "The beard icon reminds me of a guy who used to go to my church. His company was called The Bearded CPA." Well, you know, that's that's it's I think he had a fine name like that's a you would trust a bearded CPA wouldn't you it's those it's those people who are clean shaven that you think are all shady right so um stale fries haven't seen you in a while um they're in Seattle right yes their main office is based in Seattle I'll be up there a couple days next week um they actually did a really super nice thing for me today we were scheduling next week my wife's already chuckling um, they asked me to stay an extra day and I go, um, I really think that decision, uh, thank you for following perpetual, perpetual fest. Really appreciate it. Um, oh, this is not a kombucha by the way. Oh thug. This is a session. I'll let y'all see some, some beer. I don't, I don't drink kombucha. Not my thing. Sensational now following. Thank you. Getting back to the very nice thing formidable did for me today. Um, they were, uh, they asked me to stay around another day and I said, you know, um, I can't remember the exact words, but I made it a joke. I was like, uh, you know, my, my, my wife would really appreciate some flowers for this. She gave me the saddest puppy dog eyes when she found out I need to stay an extra day. So I might need some flower money to go, uh, you know, appease her when I get home. And what did they do? I shit you not. They gave me a gift card to buy my wife flowers. That is a great touch. Like... Like I cannot think of a nicer little thing that a, a a business could have done to say like yes we appreciate you, and your family and we realize you coming up here take some time away from your family so, so thank you so uh, formidable spot on, good stuff, um, sweet, holy shit I didn't realize it's already ten o'clock y'all um first off thank you for all you staying up with me I don't know how you're doing it some of you I know some of you are out there on the east coast. And uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, I know Chris, you're kind of healing up, so I hope your your healing's going well, and I hope you're getting better. I'm um, asking you other East Coast folks, just thank you for being around. Um, I don't know how you're powering through. Maybe you're night owls. Uh, maybe you're young. Maybe you have uh, children keeping you up late at night. I have no idea. Thank you for being here with me. Um, I'm going to spend just a couple more minutes on here. I have nothing left to really code tonight. I thought we might get to some more stuff, but I'm really glad that we got into the things we did. Um, but I'm going to give you about like five more minutes or, you know, if you ask a really good question, I'm happy to keep answering. But um, you know me. Uh, I tend to end right around 10 to 10, 15, somewhere in that arena. And um, I spend the rest of the evening with my wonderful wife, whom you might occasionally see walking back and forth because guess what? We live in a small house. It happens. Um, Chris is, um, Chris is proud of his 1am fact. That's damn right. Um, o Thug Muff Muffin says, uh, kombucha is yucky. Session is great though. Uh, I actually agree. Uh, Lucas, 303, uh, 30, man, I, I don't plan on fighting you, but, uh, good to know. Um, Kevin's like, we need to get you in some React Native sometime soon. You're absolutely right. Um, because I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, I'm going to definitely need to, to figure that out and learn it. Pie Queen and Boulder's uh, an hour ahead um, at 11.05. That's, that's right. Um, thank you for winding down your day with uh, more than you asked for, right? Like, I should, uh, do you think I should just do the stream with that, like, really low, smooth voice? Thank you for being here. I really appreciate each and every one of you. We're here all night. We're here to bring you the, the new stuff in JavaScript and yada, yada, yada. I don't know. That would be really funny, right? Like, get all bassy like I don't know. Uh, I'm getting to that point of the night where I'm like, eh, I don't give a fuck no more, right? Like, we all know what that is. We, we all know what that point is, right? Like, some of us go to bed. Some of us do, like, silly shit, video games, uh, YouTube. I don't know about you. Um, but, yeah. Uh, give me your questions if you got any. Uh, 
trying to think of other things worth sharing. Um, as always, you can check out my podcast if you haven't. Um, we didn't have a new episode this week. Uh, it's called Second Career Devs. Um, uh, I recommend you go check it out. It's really cool uh, about... Um, it's just, like, I'm a second career dev. I've mentioned on this stream multiple times. Uh, I used to be a pastor, and I taught myself the program, and I now have this much more uh, fun, lucrative career. Um, and there's just other people who have amazing life changes, and it's really cool to share their stories. Um, so I'm really lucky that I get to find them and I get to share them. Um, so please check that out. Uh, if you're trying to find old streams, uh, I do put them on my YouTube channel, so you can always check those check those out if you're on egghead you might find some of my videos on there i've put a few man all of a sudden i'm i've got the like the the burps or the hiccups or something um uh egghead io i have a few videos on there if you're you're a member please check them out if not um i think some of them are still free and i'm working on making some uh some new ones um but yeah uh, I think that's all I got. I'm not seeing any uh, questions come in. That's cool. I probably answered like most of them anyways. So uh, this is what I'll say for now. Um, I'm going to peace out here in a second. I hope each and every one of you has a really great week. Um, thank you for being tuned in today. Uh, I really appreciate it. Hope you come back. And uh, we'll catch you next Tuesday. Uh, next Tuesday, um, I, I, you know, follow me on Twitter and, 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 and pay attention because I don't know what's going to happen while I'm in Seattle. Um, I might stream from, from wherever I'm staying and uh, I might not. Cause you know, if there's an opportunity to spend some time with some people that, uh, I otherwise don't get to see often like devs that I want to meet or, or something like that, uh, I might have to, you know, it's not just have to, but that would be a good use of my time on Tuesday. Not that this is a bad use. But I, I hope you would understand, right? Like, so um, just stay tuned. I'll let you know about next week. Um, Pie Queen, Second Career Dev 2, awesome. Hit me up on Twitter. Seriously, DMs, always open people. Love to hear your stories. Love to chat with you. Peace.